Welcome everyone, this is Pilot Needles and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at Lazus and Lotro and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Sanswinda. Hello. And Krister. Hello. Hello everyone. Uh, we have a busy week this week because we've had an update. And that was update 33.2 which introduced a few changes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Of special note, Before the Shadow is now available for pre-purchase. We will talk about that later. Get to that next section. But more importantly, new class combinations are now available. And they're expanded your options for class combinations as follows. Dwarf and Staldax characters can now choose the Captain and Warden class. Play a Dwarf Warden. Now is your chance. Or, Krista, are you planning on playing a Dwarf Captain instead? A dwarven Captain? That doesn't make any sense. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm intrigued by the Hobbit Lore Master. I think that's well, kind of funny. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry sorry for jumping ahead there. <laughs> All right. Elf and High Elf characters can now choose to be burglars. Hobbit characters now may choose to be champions or lore masters. And human characters may now choose to be room keepers. So I heard, Krister, that you were interested in the Hobbit lore master? Well, more, I was kicking myself because I felt like our, my, the kin missed an opportunity to make some money, which is that we could have gotten a bunch of lore masters together, and then we could have had them scribe their books into tiny little books that then we could sell to the Hobbit lore masters for a profit. So I was kind of <laughs> upset that I didn't take advantage of that, but... Uh, yeah, I, I think, well, I just, uh, you know, it's honestly, what what are, what are should be restricted anyways? Uh, you know, should should any race be able to play any class uh, in Lotro, perhaps? Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think the most intriguing one for me, just because I love the thought of it, is just a little Hobbit Lord Master. <laughs> little, a little uh, short little guy or girl telling everybody else what to do. Well, I'm a Lore Master, so I'm perfectly cool. Well, oh, just shut up. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, yeah, out of all the class combinations, I, I have to admit the, the Hobbit Lord Master was the one that I'm, I'm most interested in, I guess. And I can't explain why, I guess, exactly. <laughs> you can't explain why. Just a certain uh, characteristic. Short, full of wisdom. Yeah, that reminds me of my grandma. Maybe that's why. <laughs> it does remind me that when I... Logged in on Wednesday and created a Hobbit Lore Master. I arrived in Archit you know, after doing the tutorial. I arrived in Archit and I arrived in this sea of bears. <laughs> I'm guessing slightly different than the time that we were bears and then there were other bears. <laughs> and yeah. it was a sea of Bjorning bears. Yeah, in this case, it was a sea of pets to Hobbit lore masters. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. I thought it would be hysterical if you were suddenly surrounded by 100 Bjornings, and one of them was like, would you like to contribute to the Bjorning Education Fund? Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, that would have been funny, everything. too. It would have been funny, except for the fact that, I don't, that Bjornings wouldn't physically... I don't think there's a physical way for Bjornings to get into that area. Oh, so anybody's going to find a way to be Orny. Yeah, he's on top. No, he probably feet. means the intro because he does the tutorial still. Oh, duh. Where you have yes. to fight okay. the spiders that I always skip. And so I never think of it as part of the intro. But Actually, that would make sense. That would be awesome to have a Bjorning show up there because nobody, everybody would be like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. How did you get in? Who let you in? Yes, <laughs> who let you in? Inside there, I was finding quite a number of I think half the people there were Hobbit lore masters. Then I saw at least one human for there. There were one or two. I actually saw a human lore master in there, which is seemed rather odd, I think. What a what a time to <laughs> create a human lore master <laughs> since they've been around for quite a while on that one. So that's showing you that it looked like Hobbit lore masters were popular with a large number of people 
like. Oh, that's funny to think of too. Just these hordes, the hordes of war masters and their pets uh, going everywhere. Yeah. For the last time, no animals in my in my bar. <laughs> in fact, the 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 thing about the bear is because the bear is the first pet that you get, and when I got the level three, I went to the trainer and paid the twenty five mithril for the tundra cub. See now that feels like a much more appropriate war master pet. Appropriate frankly. one for a hobbit. Yeah, I'm sorry, for a hobbit. For a hobbit war master that yeah, the cub seems perfect. Yeah. Perfect size for a hobbit. He's all these oh, huge bears. <laughs> all these little hobbits running all over the place. Yeah, because if the bear could put if you could put a cart on that bear and then you could uh, you know sit in the cart and ride it around, that would be one thing. No, uh, you can't do that. <laughs> But anyway, those are the new dwarf combinations that are now possible. So let's then head into other news and notes because the minstrels, all minstrel class tra trees have been reset for update 33.2. If you play a minstrel, please respend your class trade points and save your preferred specs. And that, of course, is because they completely changed the mithril tree. We've been starting to talk about that for the last few weeks, talking about the changes on it. So now we get to go over all of the changes. Find, summarize it all up. Also note that for events, new cosmetic items have been added to the game in preparation for this year's Harvest Mast Festival which begins at 11 a.m. on October 12th and will run through November 1st, which pretty much tells you that they're not expecting to have update now on October 12th, most likely. So let's then head into the class changes. Incoming healing debuffs applied by players now stack with one another Unique debuffs will not stack with themselves. This applies to all classes. And note, though, that some incoming healing debuffs have been reduced in potency. As for Bjorning's Brutal Retribution, Brutal Retribution armor sets now list and use a four-item set bonus. I am not familiar with the Bjorning armor set, so I wouldn't know. Whether that's good or bad or whatever. Now for Brawlers. Brawlers will now gain the correct battle rank modifiers when entering into the Entmores. Updated Brawler specific loot drops for both library and school at Thamirdine. The movement speed debuff from throw object no longer affects enemies who are immune to slows. Rats. <laughs> But that's probably good. <laughs> and Trail Food Boost now works with a Feast of Anorian and Superior Feast of Anorian. You know, I was just thinking that the throne object only worked, not because it was a slow necessarily, but because they were so astonished <laughs> to see this object <laughs> flying at them <laughs> that they had to slow Is down that to a process <laughs> it. Yeah, I guess not. I guess it was an unintentional effect. Oh, well. As for burglars, burglars now start the game with two daggers equipped instead of one. Yay! Mounted combat critical hits will now correctly open the critical skill chain. Fixed gambler surprise strikes not multiplying properly with gambling gambles damage, damaging gambles damage, and cunning attack bleeds should now reapply correctly even when a current bleed is about to expire. Suppose there must have been some trouble with that. What was it? Uh, applying it and then immediately expiring it or something like that? 
Sounds like that could be it. Yes. That's it for the burglar. So let's go to the captain. Stoutak captains can now open Stoutak's newbie heirloom pack, which is a strange thing to put in since... Were, were there Stoutak captains before? I could, no. I'm no. So <laughs> that's a strange thing to make it into the notes. Captains now start the game with a two-handed sword. And Noble Mark range is no longer reduced by Venomous Haze. Now for champions, Deep Strike's bleed damage now properly increases at trait ranks 2 and 3. And a second item, not in the release notes, but which has been noticed, is that the champion sprint is no longer makes you immune to slows in the moors. So if you're in the moors using champion sprint, if someone, I guess, tries to slow you down, you're going to be slowed down a little bit there. And I heard that the works were celebrating. I would imagine, yeah. I'd imagine not, not knowing that bit of news when you're in the moors. You're like, oh, ha, ha, ha. You will never catch me. Oh, no. <laughs> I've got to admit, my first thought was, wow, maybe we can kill them actually now. But, <laughs> I mean, that's probably bad news for the champion. <laughs> well, the champions definitely are not happy about it. And what is strange is that I had not realized how much Brent was considered to be an important skill in this because I'm so used to Terry Adwin, who, of course, plays a warg, not a champion in the Moors. And so, of course, she always refers to as Sprint as like, being the least useful of all the champion skills. <laughs> or at least that's the way I get the impression. So obviously, in the Moors, the champions had a very different opinion on that matter. Now let's go to the minstrel. Huge number of things here for the minstrels. First of all, minstrels can no longer specialize in the yellow line. Because yellow line can no longer be chosen as a specialization, yellow trait costs have been adjusted. In general, yellow trait only costs one point, while skill-granting traits cost two, and significant traits cost three. I'm not too sure what the word significant means here, but I would pre presume they mean ones that are very powerful or something like that. Called Greatness now has a seven-minute cooldown and resets one key class cooldown per trait tree for every fellowship per with within 25 meters. This effect is raid-wide and has a two-minute cooldown on receiving this effect. Armor set bonuses, which reduce Call to Greatness cooldown, have had their effect changed from minus 45 seconds to minus 60 seconds. So that means you'll have a one-minute cooldown then if you have that armor set bonus. Then armor set bonus, which gives Call to Greatness a chance to trigger its effect again, now give it a chance to reset the cooldown of Song of A. So that set bonus is the change. Now speaking of Song of Aid, Song of Aid no longer grants unique class specific bonuses. It now grants your fellowship a heal over time as well as reduces and reflects a portion of damage. The heal over time effect lasts for 10 seconds. The buff reduces and reflects 15% damage for 10 seconds, then 5% damage for another 10, 15 seconds. And as for anthems, for all anthems, base buff duration is now 30 seconds. Anthems share a 25 second cooldown. Anthems no longer add alter codas. Anthems are only unusable, or only usable in combat. All anthems grant a benefit to your entire fellowship or raid. The tracery anthem duration has had its effect halved. It now 
is plus 33 seconds max. All Anthems are now fast skills. Anthem duration bonus from Anthem duration trait is had from 50 second max to 5 second. All Anthems, except for Anthem of the Free Peoples, are now categorized as lesser or greater Anthems. Lesser Anthems require one ballad buff to play. Greater Anthems require two ballad buffs to play. Lesser and Greater Anthems form three pairs and are numbered accordingly. Lesser and greater anthems which prepare will combine their effect to a single buff on your allies. Subsequently, as long as your buff has not expired, using either anthem from the pair will refresh the combined buff's duration. Anyone actually have a chance to test this? Well, uh, last night when we did uh, Hidden Horde, uh, Looney was... Uh, giving us feedback <laughs> <laughs> uh, as he was adjusting. So um, he ended up uh, feeling like uh, a couple things, like his healing was, he felt like his healing was good. He was feeling a bit, uh, I don't know, it wasn't like he outright hated it, but he just was feeling a little bit stressed out about uh, keeping five anthems up. But I didn't know if that was just more his his frustrations are not there. Um, but what was I guess what was interesting about it was there's been a lot of negativity around it, uh, around the changes, but overall it seemed like his practical use of it um, was, uh, wasn't too bad. Now, that being said, I'd say the biggest complaint we've heard from all of our, uh, I've, I've heard from all my mini uh, friends, uh, would be why, why? Why did you guys do that? Could you guys at least make us understand why these changes, why such a wide sweeping modification to this class have had to occur at this time? You know, I think that's what's mystifying everybody. So I feel like it might be like when the trade trees were introduced where uh, there was a lot of uh, frustration when people had to sacrifice the play style that they had developed before that. But once you got into the traits and settled down, you kind of, you kind of realize this is, was actually pretty good, and uh, you didn't feel as bad about it. So we are in the first week where they're all going, yeah! Yeah, so, so basically Louis' feedback was he, he, he complained right at the beginning about a couple things being different that he couldn't do any, any longer. Um, I think the Anthem's out of combat was one of the things, but I don't, I don't know if that's a major thing or you know, a, a minor situation ultimately. Um, but overall, I'd say his experience wasn't wasn't negative with the changes. And in terms of healing us, because we were in the T2, and he actually did need to do his job, <laughs> uh, the healing itself was just perfectly fine. This year. So, um, so he was uh, definitely capable of continuing to do the job that we needed him to do. Um, and his complaining was, meh. You know, it, was, it wasn't as, uh, you know, he wasn't frothing at the mouth saying, I'm going to rage quit and delete all my tunes. So he was uh, less than that. <laughs> all right. Let's then look at Anthem of the Third Age. Dissonance now gives plus 20% cry and call damage to yourself and plus 5% light, fire, lightning, and frost damage to your group. Anthem of the wow. Third Age. What? Uh, so that might be, is that like a, uh, what, uh, would they have to trade to get that? Or is that just a change to, cause that's a pretty nasty skill if you think about it. No, well, dissonance, I think that's one of the, Anthem was third age, this, it sounds like it would be a basic Anthem when you're in okay. Angry Hand. Yeah, but you have to be in Angry Hands, not healing anyone but yourself. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because that could be, I mean, that, that damage bonus, uh, you know, if, it, if it's stacked with other bonus sources, you know, it could be a devastating uh, addition. <laughs> Is now, it, now, Sans, just because I don't play a mini, uh, going from happy hands to angry hands and back, is that a big, is that a big pain? Is it like the, because the RK is, has tools that they can kind of go back and forth. Okay, uh, so before this patch... It was a big pain, and it would freeze your whole screen for a bit. 
with this patch, hopefully they fixed it so that you can swap back and forth as fast as the Runekeeper. I have not tested it yet. Okay. Okay. Wow. But you have to remember, though, is that if your trait tree is very, very strongly set for angry hands, going into happy hands, not going to be opti optimally in happy hands, but you'll at least be able to get something. Well, well maybe you can balance that a lot better with, with yellow line effectively being a non-specialist. Yeah. And you might be able to, like, treat far enough into the red line to get the Anthem of the Third Age Dissonance, um, but still get most of your healing skills. I don't know how far down it is or anything yet, though, because I've patched since the last patch, but that's as far as I've gotten. Right. And I've been too busy playing. Lore Masters in the last few days that I haven't had a chance to play, <laughs> <laughs> play a minstrel yet. Now, if you are Anthem of the Third Age, happy, happy Hands instead of Angry Hands now gives a less potent reduction modifier, but gives plus 5% outgoing healing and a minus 5% induction duration to your group. Anthem of Composure now grants less tactical mitigation, but gives 3% Shadow, Acid, and Fire mitigation. Anthem of Compassion is new and returning 1 minus 1 to 4% incoming damage, formerly on Inspire Fellows, and 3% Lightning and Frost mitigation. Anthem of the Free Peoples is back. And now it does 1 to 5% incoming healing and 2 to 10% outgoing damage. Anthem of Prowess, plus 5% melee damage, minus 5% attack duration, and 5% orc craft and fell rot mitigation. And Anthem of War, the bonus to melee damage, has been moved to Anthem of Prowess. The Tracery Anthem of War damage buffs now includes Prowess in its name. This Tracery is essentially unchanged, but the buffs modified by the Tracery are split between Anthem of War and Anthem of Prowess. And a oh. new tra- Okay, I was just going to say, doesn't that sound- Okay, so now, this is a non-minstrel here. Yeah. So, Sans put me on my place. But now, that sound- the, the, being able to do five, because before the changes, you were able to keep three anthems up, right? Is that, am I understanding that correctly? I always thought that a number was three. So before the changes, how many anthems were there? You had the one that you could get in, only in red line, that they moved way down the red line. You had composure and something else that I don't remember the name of that looked like a little person. And then <laughs> you had one in the green line. Like a Hobbit lore master, maybe? <laughs> I think it depended on which line you were in. Um, right. But I think you could get three to four up. But I'm not positive. Okay. There, okay. As many as there were, as many as you could treat into, you could have up at the same time. Okay, because as, as much frustration as I've heard out there, um, the, I mean, that sounds like on the surface to me, that sounds like that is uh, a very, a positive change for the minstrels to be able to have those five up, especially considering, uh, you know, when Pine Leaf was reading off the modifications that those anthems do, it sounds like you could have a lot, but, but like you were saying though, some are restrict are the, the, some anthems are restricted to your stance, right? So, some are restricted to your stance and it says they share a 25 second cooldown. And they only last for 30 seconds now. Well, they're assuming, though, so, that if you're serious about anthems, you'll be probably tra trading it to get that extended. Right. And now that's the question. Can you still do that? Is that still how? Well, I, uh, I haven't I, tested it. I read okay, that okay. earlier that the anthem duration, well, there's the anthem duration bonus for the anthem duration trait. 
which is now 20. Well, okay, that was reduced down to 25 seconds. So that means 25 plus the. So if the duration was 30 seconds and plus 25, that's 55 seconds that you can get that down to. And anthem duration, there's a tracery for that. It says plus 33 seconds maximum is the new max on that. I would presume that 33 is for the gold one, that it's going to be 30 probably for the cyan, seven purple, or that for the yellow, I guess. But those are estimates. I don't have them in front of me. But well, it just, I feel like it's, it, it, you know, it's just that what maybe maybe once the fervor dies, uh, dies down from the you know, ground zero of the change, uh, maybe these are positive changes already, you know. They could be, and I'm guessing we'll have guides out soon if they're not already out. Um, because I know yes. we've got some minstrels who will be working quite fervently to get that published. Yeah, to get that published and to squeeze the most they can get out of the system. Yeah, I mean, I, and I'm interested to see what people have to say as they settle into the class. Too, so. now, the good news is it doesn't sound like it's too bad. New trait, Invigorating Anthem. Rank 1 grants Anthems a personal effect when used, formerly gained from using Anthems followed by Codas. So in other words, the thing that you used to get when you used the Coda is now going to be part of the Anthem, so you don't have to burn your Anthem by... Because I know that was one of the things, is I never used the special Codas because I wanted to keep the Anthem up. So that looks like it's not going to be a problem anymore on that. Ranks 2 to 4, reduce Anthem cooldown slightly. And rank 5 of Invigorating Anthems will cause Cry of the Course to reset Anthem cooldowns. Now, Mistral Ballads. All ballads are now fast skill. Ballad buffs and which previously reduced power costs, now increase your incoming healing. This affects the perfect performance buff and the strike accord buff as well. And I guess that's because reducing power cost is sort of meaningless these days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect ballad now heals you and a small amount, you for a small amount when used in Melody Stance. Minor Ballad now does slightly more damage when used in Dissonant Stance. The trait Resonant Ballads, a Watcher of Resolve specialization trait, now also causes Ballads to reduce the active cooldown of Cry of the Chorus. And Major Balance Resonance can now target allies rather than healing in an in an AoE around the caster. The major ballad description no longer suggests that it heal that it, its heal is always centered on the user. Alright. So I guess if you're targeted on an enemy, it centers around you. If you target on a friend, it's around the friend that you target. It might even go through to whoever the enemy has targeted, I don't know. Oh, we'll uh, that would make sense. Because it might go through straight to your tank. Yeah, that's how I often apply Shield of the Duty to my uh, main tank. It's just targeting through the uh, through the arm. Let's then head into Mistral Codas. Coda of Fury damage increased slightly. Fellowship damage buff reduced to 1%, 5% with Thunderous Codas. Coda of Melody buff now gives 1% resistance penetration, 5% with Thunderous Codas, rather than partial block, parry, and evade. And Coda of Resonance buff reduces to 1% 1, 1 incoming healing, 5% with Thunderous Codas. Minstrel stance-based skills. Melody of Battle. Reflect potency is now based on incoming damage now gives a 3% parry bonus rather than, a, than parry rating. New merge trait, Memories of Battle, adds a trait, add a plus threat generation effect on the recipient melody battle. 
Echoes of Battle now applies their critical defense and resistant debuffs formerly on Timeless Echoes of Battle. Damage reduced slightly. And Timeless Echoes of Battle now applies a lesser version of its former resistance debuff and damage increased slightly. Echoes of Battle and Timeless Echoes of Battle will now toggle themselves off if you leave the required stance. Man, that sounds like they don't want you to change stances, but like you have to change stances. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> well, Call of Orme. Now available in Melody Stance with reduced damage. Debuff duration increased when used in Melody. Reduced debuff potency when used in Dissonance. Both debuffs will stack with each other and themselves, but only two of these debuffs can be active at the target at the same time. Call of Fate can now be used in Melody Stand. Dissonant Strike, Hero Strike, and Healer Strike have have their damage and healing values rebalanced slightly against one another. Piercing Cry will now stun on critical hits and remove corruptions in Melody Stance only. Boo! <laughs> I knew you wouldn't <laughs> like that one. <laughs> and Dissonant Piercing Cry damage trees. And that's, I guess, to balance out the maybe that's supposed to balance out the fact that the mob's gonna come bash you over the head <laughs> well, other minstrel skills cry of the valor damage increased slightly and no longer buffs your in combat morale regen cry of the wizards damage increased slightly inspire fellows will no longer grant a minus 1% incoming damage effect, now found on Anthem of Compassion. Cry of the Course cooldown increased from 60 seconds to 75 seconds, and Cry of the Course silence immunity reduced to 10 seconds duration. Now, Mistral Traits. Whew. New trait, Anthem of Compassion, Watcher of Resolve Tree. The trait Improved Inspired Fellows no longer adds damage reduction. That effect is now in Anthem of Compassion. The Improved Inspired Fellows trait will now cause Inspired Fellows to tear up to Inner Strength on your fellows with Inner Strength trait is also active. New trait, Thunderous Codas. Well, we referred to this on a couple of occasions, so now we finally find out what this really is all about. Rank 1. Grant you an additional effect on your codas. Code of Fury deals additional damage. Code of Melody has 33% chance to reset Anthem cooldowns. And Coda of Resonance applies a small splash heal around your target after a brief delay. And ranks 2 to 5 increase your fellowship wide buffs from your codas. Cry of the Valor is now a red line set bonus, only accessible if you are specializing in the Warrior Scald tree. The trait Fierce Cries is now a trait on the red tree, and its potency has been increased to 20%. Triumphant Spirit. Now a blue line trait set bonus, only accessible if you are specializing in the Watcher of Resolve tree. Trump of Spirit now has a base 2 meter, 45 second cooldown, formerly achieved by spending a trait tree. The trait Raise Our Spirits has been moved to the blue tree and will cause Raise the Spirits to apply a small area of effect heal after a brief delay. Its max rank has been reduced to 4. And the trait Word Spreads. This trait has been merged with Strength of the Hammerhead. Rather than adding a mastery buff, rank 3 now increases single target skill damage while the bubble is active. 
The potency of this damage buff is greater for Song of the Hammerhand, weaker for Gift of the Hammerhand, and weakest for Legend of the Hammerhand to reflect the number of allies affected. The trait Improved Hero Strike is now Improved Strikes and now improves all three strike skills damage by up to 30%, healing by up to percent Adding ranks in perfect performance now also increases the duration of the buffs granted by the trait. The trait Cacophonous Timeless Echoes is now called Cacophonous Echoes as this trait improves both damaging versions of the echoes as well as the red line capstone trait Harsh Echoes. The trait of all trades has now 5 ranks and its effects have been changed slightly. Its max bonus is now plus 10% outgoing healing and plus 15% damage. Increase the potency and debuffs of the trait Strike Accord. The trait Sharing a Story has been split into two separate traits. Songs of Woe, increasing the valid critical chance by 1 to 15%. 1 to 5%, and sharing a story causes ballad criticals to reset all versions of Piercing Cry. Tale of Tales. The Tale of Tales trait no longer grants you a passive buff aura. What, when traded, Tale of Tales will cause your anthem skills to tear up a 30 second duration raid wide buff, increasing potency and granting additional bonuses each time that it tears up. And the Tale of Tales effect will grant you bonus fate, resistance, finesse, critical rating, and vitality at the highest tier. And still is death duration reduced to 10 seconds. Tracery still as death cooldown now reduces the still and death cooldown by 48 to 66 seconds depending on the rarity. Any comments on any of that stuff? There are a lot of changes to the minstrel class. <laughs> yeah, it's trying to process all that, isn't it? Now, minstrel miscellaneous updates and fixes. The former set bonus, Anthem of Prowess, increases attack speed. Now gives Anthem of Prowess buff 3% additional attack speed and melee damage. The former set bonus, Inspire Fellows duration reduction stacks now gives a plus 30% chance of Coda or Melody to reset at the cooldowns. The former set bonus Inspire Fellows Damage Reduction now gives each duration of the Song of Aid lesser damage redirect. The former set bonus Anthem of Prowess increases attack speed, now gives the Anthem of Prowess's buff 3% additional attacks and melee damage. Several effects have been changed from minus skill induction to minus healing skill induction. Reduced baseline inductions of all induction skills by 15%. Several traits and effects have had their icons changed to better reflect what skills or effects they're related to. References to destined cries and calls should now be cries and calls as these modifiers generally apply to cries and calls regardless of whether or not you're disadvantaged. The fear resistance buff from Story of Courage has been reduced in potency and no longer stacks with itself. Updated the trait and skills tooltips to improve slash the Story of Courage to accurately reflect how the traits and skills are functioning. Increased as the base damage for most damaging abilities, especially those which are specific to the Warrior Skull Tree and Dissonance, and increased the healing slightly, Triumph of Spirit, Fellowship's Heart, and Song of A. And did you get all that? Yes. <laughs> if you said no, I just said, well, then you have to listen to the recording. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Sam it's going to take a lot of playing to get used to this. Yeah, Sam said the mystical changes will take a long time to get used. To this. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now, what was removed from the minstrel? Protector of song. The trait shield of focus has been removed. 
the corresponding skill shield focus has been removed. The trait shielding cry has been removed. The trait improved coda of melody has been removed. The skill anthem of the third age melody and its associated traits have been removed. And the trait improved call of the second age has been removed. From Watcher of Resolve, the trait Resolute Block Rating has been removed, and the trait Spiring Rise and Calls has been removed. And that concludes the Minstrel Chain. And I think I should refrain from the pop quiz. <laughs> I'll copy off Sands. <laughs> you copy off Sands. <laughs> Oh, look, apparently Sam had the same idea about a pop quiz. All right. <laughs> <laughs> As for Wardens, Stout Axe Wardens can now open the Stout Axe Newbie Heirloom Pack. And Wardens now start the game with a Javelin Whip. Fancy. All right. So let's go into quests, instances, and adventure areas. Intro, Strider's Charge, now gives a robe as a light armor reward option. And I'll just tell you, what do you care about this? Because I, I think that cosmetic looks better than the starting robe that you get when you start as a minstrel. So as soon as I got that, that became my robe that I'm wearing. Now, it isn't a new cosmetic or anything like this, so it's possible I might have something like that already in my wardrobe, but since I didn't have access to my wardrobe at the time I was in pre arch it, that was a perfect thing for me to go into and to use for my for my minstrel. I mean, my, my lore masters. I guess your minstrels could also use And foes in the Gunabad battle at the Lofts or battle of at the Forges will no longer erroneously award XP, item XP, currency, or loot, defeating public instant monsters that continuously respawn is not intended to advance characters. However, these particular enemies were not set up correctly until now. The various Gunabad battle quests will continue to award item XP and other rewards. Now note that this is Right. Yeah. So, therefore, the good news is you won't be clogging up your bags, I guess, with the stuff from them. Bad news is, well, you're not getting XP, item, currency, or loot there if you get it. So, you're not going to. They don't want people to use it to farm for. Apparently, people are using it as a farm area because there's some foes in there that very, very quickly respawn. And. They were constantly spending all their time in the forges getting XP reward for their for the reward track. That's the reason why they cut this back. And speaking of items and rewards, having discovered an error in the legendary item XP required for the legendary item rewards track across various levels, we have made adjustments to the curve. Changes will speed up progress through the legendary item reward track for characters of most levels. For levels 45 through 60 and 95 through 120, the legendary item XP required to advance the track has been reduced. For levels 61 through 94, the legendary item XP required to advance the track has been greatly reduced. For levels 121 to 130, the legendary item XP required to advance has been slightly reduced. And for now, levels 131 to 140, the legendary item X required to advance the track was exactly the same. However, we plan to make adjustments to the seasons, likely requiring slightly more legendary item experience to advance levels one higher. And the Brawler Throne of the Dead Terror advanced pieces now have their proper set bonus. All right. Wait, now, you're done? Uh, I, oh, wait, I don't know I what to do with I myself. <laughs> now, that went through 
the class change. And special events. Let's see. And we have another area just as long for PVMP. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, Have right. a caffeine. All right, and unfortunately, I promised that I was going to read this all out when the actual update was made to the die. You did, and I was just wondering how you were going to handle that, Pine. I remember well, Shane said it was a terrible mistake. <laughs> a terrible mistake. <laughs> you know, I don't recall saying that, actually. I recall being glad that we were skipping it that day. <laughs> All right, let's see how fast I can say this. General monster play changes. First off, for general orc changes, Dying Rage has become Undying Rage. Undying Rage cooldown is 8 minutes and requires the orc to be under 50% health. When activation, it applies a corruption effect that makes the orc immune to death. Increasing damage reduces incoming damage. And on expiration, deals 50% of the orc's max morale as damage. So, in other so it words, still sounds like it's going to kill the orc. It's going I, to kill the orc I'm at the end. I'm not entirely sure it. why they changed the name, but that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's something that always killed the orc in the past also? Uh, you know, I'm not positive because I didn't play many orcs, but I'm guessing so if it said it was Dying Rage. You because I'm guessing there. it deals 50% of the orc's max morale is damage to the orc, not to the enemies around it. Or maybe right. it's to everyone. But it doesn't say. Yeah, it doesn't say to whom. <laughs> Additionally, an additive effect provides a 2% heal boost on all skill plays while under the effect of Undying Rage. And if the corruption is removed before the effect expires, the orc does not suffer the 50% damage. I guess that answers our question on that. And has the cooldown for Undying Rage reduced to 300 by 300 seconds. So I was right. It does hurt the orc. Yeah. <laughs> the orc loses so, 50% of its damage. But it is interesting, then, is that Max the morale. players... <laughs> have this choice. Do you suffer what this orc is doing to you and watch it die afterwards, or do you remove the corruption so you don't suffer what it's doing to you, but then the orc is going to live? You know, that's a great question. <laughs> and if the yeah. freeps are just, like, randomly removing corruptions because they can, they might <laughs> save a lot of orc lives. Outpost changes. For each outpost that monsters players control, they receive a 20% bonus to glory, infamy, and combination earned, and 44,900 finesse. For each outpost that free players control, they receive a 20% bonus to glory, infamy. There are no other bonuses for controlling location. Tower changes. For each tower or camp locale that monster players and free players control, they receive a 25% bonus in glory, infamy, and combination burning, and there are no other bonuses applied for controlling those locations. Toll Skarnan. Controlling Toll Skarnan grants the controlling faction a 50% bonus to glory, infamy, and combination earns, and there are no other bonuses applied for controlling Toll a Skarnan, cure pattern here. And as for artifact changes, when monster players control their artifact, they receive a plus 5% to all defenses, plus 5% to all damage, plus 50% increase to glory, infamy, and combination earned, increased finesse by 180,000, and a 2% reduction in power cost. Whee! It's a powerful <laughs> artifact. When free players control their artifact, they receive a 2% to all their defenses, a plus 50% increase to glory and combination earns, and a 2% reduction in power costs. We have updated the appearance of the new spider appearance available in the Lotro store. The appearance Sands! 
There's the, something I have not looked up yet, but I don't appearance. plan to. <laughs> the appearance is now the Gamnagal spider appearance. The white hand wart skin in the Entmores was errantly changed. We have put the correct skin back on the tray. Maps to Gramfoot and now have a 60 second cooldown. This is to alleviate the issue with the map being moved from the initial questie. Yay! Tinctures of Audacity have, have been removed from the game as they were artificially inflating the cost of Audacity while active on my players. If you use one of them, then attempt to train the Audacity trait. You are paying a cost five levels higher. That's audacious. <laughs> right. So, yes. Do not... In other words, don't use these things. <laughs> At least not if you're going to also buy Audacity. Yeah. Right. A misnamed trait was passing false information on the trait that was granted to a monster player when purchasing a tier 3 item. This was only a text error, and the correct trait was being bestowed. We had now have corrected the text. And Zagfra, the warg corruptor at Graham's foot, it has now been grounded. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Poor Zagfra. <laughs> now, uh, let's go to the class changes within the monster play. Update brings the monster player's baseline stats to 480 equivalent. As the following to each class, all classes get a plus 25% base health, Reaver gets plus 5% melee damage, Defiler gets plus 5% melee damage, and plus 5% base magic damage, Black Arrow gets plus 5% base melee damage and range damage, Coordinator gets plus 10% base melee damage and plus 10% tactical damage, Stalker gets plus 5% base melee damage and plus 15% to base tactical damage and we just get plus 5% to base melee damage. Now for the specific classes. Let's start with the Reaver. Timeout now cleanses three negative effects and briefly reduces both outgoing and incoming damage rather than restoring power. The trait improved Jagged Cut now also slightly increases potency of bleeds from lacerate and mutilation. There's a new trait, Double-Edged Blade. Adds a chance for Sudden Strike, Ravage, and Devastating Strike to tear up the Corruption buff, Reckless Melee, causing a plus 2% incoming damage, but giving a plus 8% skill damage per tier, 5 tiers back. There's a 15% chance to receive the effect for each strike made from Skills. While traded, Severing Strike is guaranteed to tear up Reckless Melee, and this effect is a corruption and can be teared down by dispelling by the free peoples. Sundering Blow now reduces the target's armor and physical mitigation for 60 seconds. Trash Wounds removes dam damage over time potency has been increased. Blade Toss now slows the target by 20% for 10 seconds. Enhanced Blade Toss now has a 50% chance to knock the target down and improves the slows to 40% for 15 seconds. Upper Hand now gives the Reaver a Corruption Effect, which adds 50% chance for the Blade Toss to knock down your target. Enhanced Upper Hand improves the Corruption, which will also cause offensive skills to reduce most of your active skill cooldowns. Skills which will have their cooldowns shortened are Sundering Blow, Thrash, Disarm, Severing Strike, Blade Toss, Impale, Devastating Strike, and Mutilation. Charge now becomes Rush when you enter into combat. Rush gives you plus 50% movement speed for 6 seconds, but will not give you immunity to CCs or slows. Bloodlust will now cleanse physical or wound effects, increasing the potency of the buff for each effect cleansed at the cost of morale. Jagged Cut 
area of effect, Arc has been adjusted slightly, and Impale bonus damage now correctly benefits both buffs that modify the Reaver skill damage. Oh, oh, okay, there it is. Oh, all right, the Orc Defiler. New stance, Curse Shouter. Yes, an entire new stance. Fun. Did they have stances before? I don't think so. I think you just okay, pick which skills to toss. All right. Anyway, new stance called Curse Shouter. Reduces outgoing healing and increase outgoing damage. Reduces induction of gourd and curse skills, disables efflorescence, alters fungal bloom, spell restoration becomes doom of the north. The doom of the north deals frost damage and applies fear that counts down for five seconds before dealing significant frost damage. Fungal spores become stinging spores. Stinging. Stinging spores deals a small amount of acid damage as well as acid damage over time and stacks up three times on the target. Leaving Orc Curse Shouter stance applies a trailing debuff, which reduces healing by 100% for 15 seconds. And you may only enter Curse Shouter stance while out of combat. So, this seems like a, a Defiler's version of Angry Hands. But wouldn't the filer angry hands technically be happy hands? Uh, there's also a new stance, Herb Tender, which increases healing and decreases outgoing damage. Healing skills gain the ability to tear up the invigorating corruption effect on allies, increasing damage, reducing attack speed, and increasing in damage. Curse becomes boon skill while applying... Corruption buffs to allies. Curse of the Lethargic Heart becomes Boon of the Blackened Heart. Plus 15 damage dealt. Curse of the Rotten Flesh becomes Boon of the Toxic Flesh. Minus 10% incoming damage. And Curse of Deadly Sorrows becomes Boon of the Battle Scarred. Increases armor, uh, barrel in mitigation, light mitigation, and resistance rating. Wait, Annoying. so if so if I get the concept correctly, so like a dwarven like runekeeper uh effectively is insulting their enemy. That's you know, that's how their a lot of their stuff manifests, right? Right. The it sounds like the orc defiler insults its allies <laughs> <laughs> to encourage them to attack their enemies. So. Okay, yeah, I guess so. Next, anointing of the stick flesh now removes one physical or tactical effect from the defiler. While herb tender stances, anointing of the stick flesh becomes a targeted skill and can cleanse up to two physical tactical effects from each group member in the area around your target. Constant pain now deals significantly more damage and significantly less healing. It must be from all that pain. That's right. <laughs> Curse of the Lethargic Heart debuff potency increased slightly. Curse of the Deadly Sorrow now reduces an opponent's fate, tactical mastery, armor value, resistance, and finesse. Curse of the Melancholic Heart now reduces outgoing healing by 50%. 5%. Gord skills of base induction increased to 2.5 seconds. Gooey Gourd now increases skill induction by 70% from 20% and is now a cleansable poison effect. Summoned Flies improvements. Re regular Summoned Flies from Plague of Flies now last 10 seconds and deals less damage but have more morale and significantly increases the evade chance. Traded Improved Flies now last 20 seconds down from 30 seconds but have a great mischance debuff, more morale, and even greater evade chance. Efflorescence induction increased from 1 second to 2 seconds. Morale cost of fell sacrifice increased to 2% of max morale. 
The trait Enhanced Curse of Sticky Feet now reduces fire mitigation and an appropriate amount of tactical mitigation from for level 140. However, the debuff is now a cleansable wound effect. And the movement speed debuff of Curse of Sticky Feet is increased by 50% when Curse Shouter stand. And they also fixed some out-of-date incorrect tooltips. Now for the Black Arrows. New Corruption Buff, Stand Tall. Gives 5% skill damage, plus 2, two max range, and minus 3% induction duration per tier. Tiers up to a max of 3. 15 seconds of duration, and this effect is a corruption and thus can be dispelled by the free people. Too bad we can't dispel corruptions off ourselves when we're in instances. Yeah. <laughs> Center is once again a channeled skill. Tears up stand tall every second while channeling and now restores morale every second rather than attempting to drain your own power. Improved vital target will now add one tier to stand tall. Vital target now deals slightly less damage. Uh, extra. yeah. Strong pull now deals more damage, tears up stand tall, and has a 12 second cooldown outside of skirmish. Steadfast barrage increases target to 40 meters and deals more damage per tick and channels for 6 seconds. Down now. He improves steadfast barrage. Gives a chance to crit and increases damage per tick and channels for 8 seconds. Cooldown now 20 seconds. Tangle Shot now applies a minus 30% incoming healing debuff. Tangle Shot now has a 20 second cooldown. Damage from Snare and Fire Trap is reduced. Damage increased slightly for Cut, Gash, Hindering Shot, Death Blossom, Revenge, Screaming Shafts, in your face and tangle shot. Most of Arrow now correctly deals AoE damage after a countdown. Explosive Arrow countdown now lasts two seconds and is a wound effect. Cleansing the wound will prevent an AoE damage, but will still deal full damage on the initial target. An explosive arrow AoE damage increased to seven meter radius. Now the war leader. Command post now increased all masteries by 25%. Battle Banner of Terror now includes a level of dread when it is summoned. The debuff for Banner of Terror now reduces physical mastery rather than tactical mastery. Banner of Horror now also includes three levels of dread when summoned. The debuff of the Banner of Horror now reduces tactical and physical mastery ratings. Menacing Roar range increased to 20 meters and total targets increased to 6. The debuff from Menacing Roar now only stacks up to 3 times on the target and it also reduces fear resistance by 5%. Black speech damage increased. We, you mean their language is so horrific that it does damage? <laughs> yep. Well, you know, certain advanced civilizations within our own galaxy consider uh, human speech infectious an infectious disease. So. Oh. Yes, I have a feeling that there are some countries that say the same thing about English. <laughs> Cleave damage increased slightly and is now a small area of effect, dealing damage up to three targets. Fracture damage increased considerably. The trait damage boost trait now grants 25% damage rather than 3%. The trait empowering now has a tactical mastery value appropriate for level 140 and its in combat power regen has been changed to resistance rating. Purge no longer breaks allies out of stealth. I'm sure their allies are happy about that. <laughs> Oh, thanks, John. <laughs> when traded, Purge now grants six seconds of immunity to crowd control. 
when power of fear is traded, fracture now grants you the no induction buff, regardless of whether it hits your enemy. The trait harsh language now also reduces healing inductions by 15%. And brawler stance now correctly reduces healing for all healing skills. Now, the spider. So Sans is going, yeah. <laughs> Improved clinging webs now correctly applies both the original mischance debuff and an additional evade and parry debuff. Venomous Haze now has a max range of 40 meters and uses the player's skill range by 15 meters. Venomous Haze now has a max range of 40 and reduces player's range skill reduces skills by 50. Okay. Lethal Kiss now deals slightly more damage at the onset and deals significantly significant damage after 10 seconds. Cooldown has been increased 10 seconds. The Lethal Kiss latent damage effect can stack up to three times on a target at once and is able to critically hit. Necrosis now reduces resistance rating of his targets by 120k. The trait Steel Weave Webs now increases the grace period of your roots to 10, 3 seconds. In Venom, base damage increased. Shelob's Gift reduces from a full heal to about a one third heal. Shelob's Gift heal potency reduced. Shelob's Gift now gives 5 Venom and increases DOT damage for 15 seconds. Shelob's Gift's cooldown increased to 30 seconds. And Shelob's Gift DOT damage buff increased from 20% to 50%. In other words, it does less dealing but more damage. Yeah, and it's, it's also considered somehow a gift. We're talking about Shelob here. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, Sam. You thought we were supposed to be fighting. That is. Feast now restores morale on a defeat event instead of power. Poison spray can now be used against NPCs. As for hatchlings, base hatchling health increased by 15%, mitigations increased by 20%. Strong Brute now gives plus 105% health, minus 10% power, plus 5% attack speed, plus 25% melee damage, plus 25% critical chance, and plus 50% evade rate. While Cytoed Brute now gives plus 50% health, plus 15% power, plus 10% attack speed, minus 25% melee damage plus 35% range damage plus 25% critical chance and plus evade rate. There's a new skill, Cleansing Shadows. It costs 3 Venom. The Weaver can consume up to 3 negative tactical song or cry effects and the Weaver is healed a small amount for each effect that is consumed. Toxic Carapace has been reworked slightly. The effect from Toxic Carapace now tears down over time, and starting tier depends on the number of Venom Pips consumed. Tier 5 effect is now minus 25% incoming attack damage, 80% reflected damage. Incoming damage potency is reduced 5% per tier, and reflect potency reduced 10% per tier. Overall damage and cooldown increase slightly, 5% maximum possible duration, 93 second cooldown. This effect is now a corruption, meaning that it can be dispelled by the Free Peoples. Toxin now decreases your target's incoming healing by 20% for a second. Piercing Attack now gives 2 Venom. In Venom, Virulent Poison and Poison Spray damage values are now correctly increased by all relevant buff effects. Catch Prey cooldown reduced to 5%. Catch Prey will now tear up an incoming melee damage debuff on your target in addition to the original effects, and Catch Prey will no longer toggle off 
when the weaver is affected by crowd control ability. And last, but not least, is the warg. So I'm sure Sans will chime in on anything in here relating to the warg and what all this means. First off, we have the flare stance. This is a change to an existing stance, or is this a new stance? Flare has been around. Okay. Flare bubble is now 7% of max health. In flare stance, Swipe becomes Brutal Swipe and will apply a corruption effect which increases the chance of triggering Root Bonus effects by 50%. Brutal Fangs, Flare Stance, now reduces Block, Parry, and Evade by 25%, and when scoring a Root Bonus hit, decreases Armor by 25% for 45 seconds. Improved Flare, Armor, and Mitigation buffs have been rolled into the base Flare buff. Improved flare trait now gives minus 10% incoming melee range damage and plus 5% malarian mitigation and plus 20% threat. Pack Hunters, non shadow slash non flare version, now increases a target's incoming damage by 5% and reduces incoming healing by 50%. Shadow Pack now reduces incoming healing by 25%. 10% after leaving the debuff area. The improved Rowling Howl damage buff lasts 25% rather than 15 seconds. Go oh, 25 seconds rather than 15 Woohoo! Basic stealth <laughs> no longer reduces movement speed, but base stealth level has been decreased by 3. 7 and in oh, 3 points. I think that meant yeah, 3.7. So um, uh, like instead of having super good stealth immediately, you've got uh a little bit less good stealth, but you're not gonna be so slow that it's useless. All right, and it increases critical chance of attacks from stealth by ten percent. Reduced bestial claws damage slightly. Increase scratch and snip damage slightly. Added minor damage to the initial skill hits of Crippling Bite and all versions of Savage Fangs. Flea Bitten now applies an initial interrupt and can be pulse and then a pulsing interrupt on the target that lasts for seconds, pulsing every five seconds. Howl of Unnerving now has a 50% to debuff mitigations by 20 percent one up to four targets pounce slash sudden pounce now applies a corruption to the warg which increases the damage on all attacks made to your jaws by 150 for 24 seconds in shadow feral scratch and snip now applies two buffs taste of blood and scent of blood both effects last for three seconds scent of blood gives you 100 percent critical chance for your next claws based attack and taste of blood gives you 100 percent critical chance next jaw based attack and the howl of the unnerving bpe debuff now only stacks two times on a single target and that is it for the pvmp changes <sighs> Hooray. no more promises to read the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> There are also a number of localization changes that they have given, both in the German and in French, and you could read the read the linked release notes in order to get those. As for miscellaneous changes, Blood Craban and Formal Corgi Pets now appear in the collections panel. Item XP runes no longer drop from Woe of the Willow T1 chest. When using Scholar Crafting Magnifying Glass and Book Props on Hobbit Males now appear correctly. Stat Axes now hold chickens correctly. <laughs> the Heave Emote will now display properly on female Stout Axe Dwarves. 
Clicking on Pips in the reward track will now zoom the display to the selected mile. Oh, I forgot to check that one out. But that should be nice. The hotkey for the reward track can now be remapped. The mount of the Shadowed King now shows correctly correct acquisition information on the collector panel. Fix the Mithril Travel at to Nalathir during Chapter 13.5, The Watch on the Dead City. Players will no longer receive a Link Dead Alert that they are eligible to purchase new trait slots, as these slots are now free. Okay. And minor corrections to the text of the following. Troshals, Erluin, Forhale, and the Shire. What? There, there were errors on the maps? And there are two known issues. The icons used for the War Steve cosmetics included in Before the Shadow, Ultimate, and Collector's Edition bundles are placeholders, and Epic prologue, prologue, a sea unsettled, is not bestowed to high, le high elf burglars after completing pro. And there is a third known issue, and that is that if you click on certain clickies that are similar to skills, they don't work. For example, hope tokens are the most. Oh, well like uh, uh, oh, I don't know, hope tokens. Yeah, hope tokens, and in fact, as far as I know, the only hope item that I know that works properly is the glass of Aglareo. Are you sure now? Because I have a working theory based on uh, how uh, it went last night, and so they've taken away nothing with hope worked for us. The the candles, they, yeah. we have those like plus one candles. They didn't work. So my theory is that SSG is trying to strip Middle Earth of all hope. You're saying that the candles don't work, or they did not work. No. Yeah, they, yeah, I would figure. Yeah, because I think all those are treated internally as skills. So don't ask me why the glass, uh, the glass is able to work. But I think it's yeah. I'm curious about all that. the other. But I noticed that the the others they seem to have some sort of action that's done to it like for example oh. the, the horn has has the sounding thing i guess the candles might have some sort of animation on yeah now we were i think we were able to purchase perks though we were able to do that plus one hope uh yeah before. because because that's not tied in with skills i think okay and i think the glass might be tied in with the perks rather than with skills and that's why the glass might work because the glass is instant. You can use the glass anywhere. You can use the glass while riding a stable horse. Yeah, that was a pretty frustrating one. Uh, I, yeah. I have to say, people are really frustrated by that particular problem. So. <laughs> yeah. And the other one that works is the book that hobbits get. Get oh. in <laughs> on Methedris. Yep. And you're, that's so funny that you say that because just, and this is just before we're going to start our race. Somebody was like, well, they were on their hobbit. They're like, well, I think I, I, I have those books. And somebody just mentions casually, oh, you can just uh, type that, what is it, reclaim uh, into the, and we're like, what? wait, what? What are you talking about? That takes, that brings all of your inventory back. So what? Yeah. <laughs> we don't need you to spend the next four hours sorting through your inventory five minutes before we need to do the raid, okay? So. <laughs> well. But yeah, that was that was something that somebody mentioned last night as well. So, oh, that's so frustrating. I just, uh, I, I really hope that that is fixed in the next update period. Yes, yeah. that is scheduled to be fixed in the next week. Is what they're currently planning on that. Okay, good, good. And we can only hope that that works very well. Anyway, the that is update thirty three dot two. <sighs> <laughs> you now, did it. You got yes. through it. We're through that. Now comes the next bit. And that's only the first bit of news. <laughs> <laughs> because they also, as we mentioned way at the beginning of this, that you can now pre-purchase be 
for the shadow the new mini expansion that is that is to be released on i believe november the 9th yeah available november the 9th 2022 And reveal the mysteries of the One Ring. Embark on a perilous journey tracking down a band of brutal Uruk warriors wrecking havoc on the pleasant land of Swan. Along the way, you will learn of the growing power of Antherion, the giver of gifts, and his creation of the One Ring in the depths of Mount Doom. Listen as Boromir, captain of Gondor, joins you on your travels, and regales you with the tales of his journey through Minas Tirith, Rohan, and Isengard. Venture into the South Downs and uncover the mystery behind the Grey Fear before returning to Rivendell to share your journey with Elrod. Adventure through a new, a new early leveling experience. Take on old foes and reunite with old friends. Fight for victory against those who wish to restore the kingdom of Angmar in the latest Lord of the Rings online expansion, Before the Shadow. Now, my question is this. If you run through the new starter zone and have this conversation with Bjorni, is he going to remember you when you get to Rivendell? Probably like, not. You were you were in my town. We, we talked. It was about two years ago. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember you. Well, from Boromir, that should only be about a month, considering. Right? Maybe he has, like, uh, memory troubles when he uh, converts into bear form. Well, yeah. Oh, he's starting to get obsessed with a certain ring, so maybe <laughs> it's affecting his memory. This update includes two new regions and a new early leveling experience. Explore two new regions with a new leveling experience that can be played between levels 1 and 32. Help Mossboard recover from gruesome Uruk attacks. Defeat Orcs, Sin Karas, Gelebrin, and explore the halls of the Swift River. Reunite with Boromir, Captain of Gondor. Then make your way to the Shire and discover the meaning behind the grave. And also, a new skirmish and six player instance. Face Sauron and Rogmul, and a new skirmish playable at any level between 20 and 1. I hope they don't mean you actually face Sauron in the skirmish. <laughs> okay, I could understand maybe facing Rogmul in the skirmish, but <laughs> I guess Sauron's hordes more likely than Sauron himself, yes. Battle the Grey Fear in a new six-player instance that can be played at any level between 20 and 140. And what I hear, though, is that the six-player instance, as usual for six-player instances, will be released in the update following the release of 34, like 34.1 or 2, usually where I'll expect that to be. The new delving system. Test your skills with the new delving system. Higher level characters can increase the difficulty of new missions included in the Before the Shadow expansion to unlock additional difficulty tiers and earn rewards. Now, I don't know whether at what level you have to be in order to start to unlock that. I guess we'll learn that later. And new themed missions wrapper. Earn rewards for completing daily and weekly rotating missions. All right. Well, I guess we'll have to see what this because I know that the existing wrapper is to complete such and such number of missions that they're pretty much random. Well, not randomly, since they are divided in days. They have a daily cycle like that. So maybe they're trying to more thematically group the missions together. We'll find that out. And get exciting new items and perks in the Collector's Edition or Ultimate Fan Bundle. 
with many items delivered immediately, including exclusive cosmetics, mounts, and expedition supplies. Choose the edition that is right for you, and you see the marketing page for more information. And that is The Lord of the Rings Before the Shadow. And as usual, there are three editions. You have the standard edition, which includes content and what everybody wants, elf dance mode. <laughs> I, I don't hear the excitement. Another elf dance? Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. An elf dance. As for the collector's edition, this includes the Before the Shadow content, an extra character slot, improved expedition supplies, Valiant Armor of the Dunedain, Valiant Steed of the Dunedain in War Steed, a Heron Pet, and of course, an Elf Dance Emote, and it says, and more bonus items, whatever, and more is. And also, for the Ultimate Fan Bundle, Before the Shadow content, extra Shared bank storage. Ten new slots on that. Extra character oh. slot. Oh. Huh. The extra character slot we talked about before. The flowing silver stone of the tortoise. And there's also a regular flowing silver stone. There is this question whether or not the regular silver flowing stone has an XP buff to it. Or, or whether it has no XP on it. I don't know what. They haven't had a chance to answer that. We'll find that out later. And flowing silver stone of the tortoise. So that is now a stat, a statted tortoise stone. That and sounds I, nice. Uh, what? I said a statted tortoise because you know right now if you. Use a tortoise stone, you have no. You give up the stats. You yeah, you give the stats, stats from your there. pocket item. Yeah. Yeah, and stat to tortoise just sounds like a band I listen to, frankly. So. <laughs> Ultimate expedition supplies a valiant armor of the Dunedain, valiant steed of the Dunedain and war steed, tome of the loyal turtle, armor of the flowing silver, elk of flowing silver and war steed, elven stars weapon aura, ultimate carry. All selection box. In the ultimate carry all selection box, one of the carry alls that's going to be included in there is they're calling it the healer's carry all. Interesting. Now, question is what is inside of a healer's carry all? Wait, does it hold salves and band aids? Aspirin? I mean, maybe it holds all your potions, but like you really only carry a few of those. I mean, yeah. that's, that's like six slots into a. And besides, if, if you had them inside there, how are you going to access? Because you can't click on. I mean, they're not easily accessible. I would think that are. Maybe you can put them on your bar. Maybe. Well, I guess I've never tried that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I usually I have think... mine on my bar so I can use them faster. Yes, yeah, but if you're, but uh, can you put something? That's uh, yeah, I've never tried put it bar. exactly. Yes, yeah, I've never tried. Oh, whether and? you can use it if you do so, I don't know. But I've done it to count, like to you can like put the ore over onto your bar so you can see the number go up. So that when it gets to the number that you need, you can just stop gathering ore. Oh, okay. That's where I tried it. That totally makes sense. But, okay. of course, you can't, like, use ore, so I don't know if that aspect of it works. Okay, now, well, yeah, that's explaining it like that, you wouldn't think it did. does work the way that yeah. you want it to. And one more thing is that VIPs get a 10% discount on the prices. The prices are $19.99 for the standard edition, $59.99 for the collector's edition, $99.99 for the ultimate fan bundle, and if you're a VIP, you could knock off 10% for whatever that cost. And they also have a comparison chart. So let's go over this. Before the Shadow content, of course, it's going to be in all of them. Additional character slot for the collector's and ultimate. 
10 additional slots for shared storage. That's ultimate. The improved expedition supplies box is for collector ultimate, which gives you reputation acceleration tomes, virtue XP acceleration one, 100% XP acceleration five of those, and rare crafting components five of those. Ultimate expedition supplies box, ultimate based on that name, 15k virtue XP, virtue XP acceleration times four, ultimate carry all selection box, which is where you could get that thing and scale flowing silver stone of the tortoise and the scaled flowing silver stone the tortoise version the non-tortoise version now note of course is that the boxes will go to the first character you log into after you make the purchase so make sure that you choose your server wisely and don't log into pvmp first <laughs> At least on the creep side. Well, actually, we'll get into that thing in a moment there. Okay. Armor of Flowing Silver Alpha Cloak okay, and the Elk of Flowing Silver thing, as I said before, are ultimate only. The Valiant stuff is the Collector's and, and Ultimate Fan thing. There is, of course, as usual, a Housing Teleport item. And the housing teleport item, of course, is something that you could use in order to go to some air location for the shadow. And I think they called it a, it's sort of an alcove, it looks like, from what Puck's description. You get a title, for the ultimate, you get a title before the shadow. If you are from the Collectors or ultimate, you get the title from the first page. If you have the ultimate or the collectors, you get a cosmetic pet heron. Ultimate gives you the tome of the loyal turtle. Now, the reason why I was saying about monster, about PVMP in there is that there is an item is that the first time you log into a monster character after you make a purchase you will be delivered monster skins to your account a new monster skin i have no idea what the monster skins looks like so i guess sounds pretty cool i was gonna ask are those pork rinds like pork rinds or and so maybe it's delicious <laughs> instead of cool looking i guess yeah. you'll have to log in and see Krister. we'll have to see well, yeah, but first you'll have to buy it. Yet. And Elven Star's cosmetic weapon aura is owned for the ultimate. They also have a dressage emote for if you for the ones who have the ultimate and everyone purchased gets the elf emote. And that is what is being prepared for the pre-purchase of Before the Shadow. Because right now it's before Before the Shadow, right? Yes. Yeah. So we can expect, we're thinking that the that Beta is, that Bulber is probably going to be in the first or second week of October. But we're they're going to have that. That covers everything. So let's then head on to the FAQ. Yes, they also have an FAQ in here. First, can you purchase it with Lotro points? And the answer to that, of course, is it will be available for 1995 points starting in March 2023. And of course, that will only be the base edition, which includes the new regions, mission. And how do you add the expansion to your existing Lotro account? After your purchase, your account will automatically be updated based on the purchase. And then they give a list of all the items that you get. 
when you go through here. Bonus items that are delivered to players. All right, let's see what we have here. They give a list of all the items that are delivered to every character on your account. That includes the teleport item, the titles, the valiant armor of the Dunedain, valiant steed, the friendly heron cosmetic, but so cosmetic pets, the elf dance of old traditions and moat, the armor of flowing silver, the elf of flowing silver, the weapon aura of elven blessings, mount dressage, loyal turtle, elven stars, and for PvMP monster play characters only, monster play up here. And the following items will be delivered once to the first character that let you log into the following purchase. That is approved X supply box and ultimate supply box. And go. And each edition of Before the Shadow has its own expedition supply box. Just so you know that. And bonus items that are delivered to players through items located in their inventories named are Graceful Elven Dance Emote, Before the Shadow Collector's Edition, and of course the Ultimate Fan Bundle and the Ultimate Fan Bundle Monster Play Appearances is another box. And the Karis Galebran Mural Alcove. And that's what it's called. The Karis Galebran Mural Alcove is the housing teleport item. If I don't pre-purchase the expansion, can I still buy the expansion bonus items at a later time? This time, the Standard Edition Collector's Edition Ultimate Fan Bundle will remain available after the launch of For the Shadow expansion. While the expansions will still be available in the Lotra Market, please note that you will be unable to purchase the bundled cosmetic items or shared storage through the local store for points. I pre-purchased the expansion, but I didn't get a product key, and that's because it now automatically unlocks it rather than the product key they had in the past. And what are the exped and then they also list the expedition supplies. Now note in here that since the stone of the tortoise and the that flowing st stone of the tortoise thing is in the ultimate expedition supply box, that means it only will only go to the first character. Not something that nobody will get. Just to make that clear. Will all Before the Shadow content be released at the same time? And the answer the six player instance will be released after the release of Before the Shadow expansion in November. And then they also show what some of the cosmetics look like below that, where they show the heron, they show some of the cosmetics. And, and they also the dressage emote and the tortoise. Well, okay, the dressage emote is going to be hard to really view since still image. And still images don't show you emotes all that well. And as I said before, there is a 10% discount for VIP. And... If you think that's enough, well, they went further. <laughs> that's right. They also, there was a, Cordovan held his first Court of the Rings. I think it's been, what, four months, four or five months since the last Court of the Rings? But he, restart, he restarted Court of the Rings this week, and this week he went over the delving system, which is an introduction of the delving system. He was giving us a little taste of what it looks like. He went on to the Palantir server, which is where they're currently testing some of the Before the Shadow stuff, and showed us what is on there, that you'll be receiving these gems that you could and that you could put into a delving stone. And the delving stone looks like the the main stone that they have for the logo of Standing Stone Games. And then they talk about what they do with them and what the rewards will be. Right now, the rewards... The rewards they're talking about are the highest-end rewards, which means 
the stuff that you will get for running probably the Delve 10 stuff, if you could somehow survive that. I suspect that I'd be lucky to get past two or three. <laughs> Christopher, how far do you think you... I know we haven't seen it yet. We haven't had a chance to test it yet. But how far do you think you'd get up that tree? you think you'd get all the way up to ten? Oh, my goodness, no. no. Okay. No, maybe three, four. Uh, maybe if, four. Uh, if we have... Reliable people, you know. Well, right now, remember... It'd be interesting to try. Now, is is that from just... Now, the Delve system, does that apply to raids in any way, too? No, no. Well, okay. they're starting it on... With the release of Update 34, of Before the Shadow, it's only going to apply to the new mission that come with the expansion. Ah, okay, okay. So therefore, you'll be either soloing or duoing if, for, for the time being. After that, they're hoping to fit it in with the other missions that have preview, already been released, like the ones in Gundabad or the ones in, in Elder Slade. So the, so the plan is to add that to those later. After that... They're hoping to start to add it to some other instances. They are looking into what it would take in order to add them to skirmishes, to add them into some of the three-player instances. One that they quoted that they're really seriously looking into as their prototype for putting them into instances are the school and the library. And this is really this is that's kind of that's interesting then because I. Because I'm gonna, I want to try that. I want to see what, you know, if you put it up at four or five. Yeah. What are you gonna get if you actually make it through? Yeah, we'll see what you actually. I think that it it gets you get a certain number of. They talked about a certain type of currency that you'll get because you know this is how things usually go. And there is rewards you will earn. This system understands you want greater challenge for greater reward and therefore offers the ability to earn gear that is equivalent to raid gear. Now, raid gear, now when they say raid gear, they're talking about about tier 3 raid gear, but no without the set bonuses. So the difference is there, it won't be okay. the set that, bonuses. That makes sense. If you want yeah. the set bonuses, then that then you still need to do the raids for those. But what you're saying is, like, if you get if you get one of those uh, uh, delving plus uh, items that you could get a ring with three slots, it just wouldn't be a ring with three slots and also, or, or, or you know, like a sorry, uh, like a chest pa- a piece with three slots and a set bonus. It would just have the three slots, right? Right. Yeah, that makes total sense to me. That you basically, if you want the improvement on that. You actually have to do the group content to uh, to achieve it. Now it now that probably should be able to be good enough to help you to maybe help you to be in a better position to actually run in something. Agreed. Yeah, uh, that's that's what it sounds like to me is that you can individually work towards uh, equipping yourself to a point where you're you're at at an entry level. Uh, you know, you're you're not going to be a liability in raid, right? Um, yeah, so I agree with you on that. We'll have to see. Time will tell, as everything else. And that concludes the game news for this week. Wow, only <laughs> <laughs> only an hour and forty five minutes. <laughs> Let's More than half the time we're allowed to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that is well. That's got to be a record for that. Let's go into the store sales. <laughs> Sans, what's on sale this week? Well, this week, available for a limited time through September 29th, is Bomber's Bounty. Uh, you can also find your shadow facts and get 25% off select war steeds and mounts, but you can't get them at level 5. 
well, the worst dudes, writing skills, <laughs> select worst dude cosmetics, movement speed buffs. And that is also through September 29th. Uh, and our weekly coupon is... Free Rejuvenation Potion with the coupon code Heal and Restore, which is also good through September 29th. And it is all smunched together. H E A L A N D R E S T O R E. Whee! <laughs> and we actually have fight news this week, also. Everything at once. From Squirrel, we have getting ready for a raid. In this case, he is he put in parentheses Rimmerhant, so I presume then that he, that as our as an example. Oh. Written, but a never completed draft from May 2020, probably not complete, but a nice read or an intro to UV that you want to take to your first steps into groups. Most of it applies to Hidden Horde now, except it is a bit worse of a raid in hindsight than Rimmerkant. Apparently, he doesn't like... How would you compare Rimmerkant versus Hidden Horde, Christopher? Uh, I want it... Well, oh, boy. Because uh, there's elements of Rimmerkant that you just absolutely despise. <laughs> there's some... But, uh, boy, that's a good one. I would. I want to say Hidden Horde has felt tougher uh, than uh, Rimmerkant was. But that being said, Boss 1 and Rimmerkant was a complete nightmare for us. And, uh, took it a long, long time for us to get by. So. Someday I'm going to have to be try that raid. Well, you've come on Hidden Horde with us a few times now. So, uh, yeah, I've been on Hidden Horde a few times. We'll probably have to do... I'm, I'm assuming that we're going to, you know, we'll broaden our raid spectrum once uh, everybody's have, tired of <laughs> yeah it could be and that's that's kind of cool is we have a lot of people that have come back now and are playing it regularly so we might be doing some more variety and uh i'll just keep you posted you know if we do remember camp uh, if we have room you're more than welcome to come along all right well that's right because next week the next week mythcard is doing Fall of Casa Doom. We'll see how that works. We'll have to first see if I can get into it because if, <laughs> if the show's as long as because it's it's going to be so we starting maybe an hour after we gather for this. So you can imagine if we have as long a show next week as this week. <laughs> There's no way I'm doing. Oh, that can't be possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a point there. <laughs> But anyway, his first thing is make sure you want to raid. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because raiding can be Yeah, it it can frustrating. Get, yep. Frustrating. Yes, yep. it can get frustrating. Right. I guess that's a good way of putting it. And it means being able to operate well with with 11 people in there and raids tend to get very chaotic based on my ex little experience with them. Probably some get more... And of course, it might be also depending on what raid it is, because I suspect that Sans is less excited about Remmer can't be about Hidden Horde. <laughs> well, I mean... Spiders. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of spiders in Remmer can't, so that might be the deciding <laughs> I would expect there to be a lot of spiders there, yes. Then he talks about getting ready before the raid, like the Discovery Deed. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was going to mention something about that, yeah. Right. It always and stinks if... right when you're getting get ready, and somebody's like, oh, wait, I don't have the... <laughs> I don't have the intro quest done. Oh. <laughs> and in fact, somebody has already... Mythgard has already asked somebody to park their captain over at the Discovery site. Yep. Or the fall of Hazadu. Yeah, that's a great idea because then that just that just eliminates that pain right there. Yeah, if you, exactly. if you have somebody that just port people over there. Yeah, uh, just just pour. 
in fact, that's how I had the discovery on Remarkant. I think of my three characters, I think, have done it. Two of them were ported there. I think the third one, I ran over there. I did run over there myself and figure out where, where it was. But, yeah, the easiest way usually is, oh, is there a captain over there? Yeah, I had Christer. Had, he had that... Uh... He had that set for his, his uh, uh, he would go out there all the time, basically, to summon people. <laughs> so, yes. But that's great, though. That's great that we can do that, though, because then you can, if you're right there, then that eliminates the 15 or 20 minutes you needed to get there in the first place. So that, right. Especially if you're trying to get the thing going, that's, uh, that's just wonderful. Oh, don't worry. If it's a little slow in getting going, it might be fine because that means I might have time to get there. That's true. That's true. That's why we. <laughs> Like with, with Hidden Horde, you know, there is a discovery process with that. And so typically if people haven't discovered it, then we're like, okay, well, we're going to start, we're going to pull trash. And then you work on getting here. And by the time you're here, we should be at boss one, which is really when you need to be here at that point. Um, so hopefully that's the case, is that the timing will just be perfect. People can still move forward with the with the raid while you're working towards getting, you know, being able to open the door. You know? Yes. Now, as for... Also, make sure you know what type of raid it is. Is it a quick, easy raid, a high difficulty, or just a first boss farm? The type of raid or group that you're joining will decide how far along you'd have to be on a specific character. For example, for Hidden Horde, are you doing your one, two, five? Makes a big difference on... I suspect tier five is probably... Not done with too many pug groups. No, I no, I would think it would be impossible. You'd because you'd have to have everybody at the top of their game with all of the the top gear and intimate with the, the mechanics. And although I, you know what, I say that uh, I can't give pug pug people a bad name at all because yeah. we've pugged some really good, uh, really excellent people who gave us uh, insights and tactics into the raid. So yeah. We've, Those people had done two or three before, right? Yes, yeah, yeah that was so, the the people and, we were talking to that one t- uh, the one time you were there were uh, had done it on T three. So. Right, yeah, right. So they had done it on higher tiers. So coming back and let's say helping us with tier one means that they're very very familiar with everything that's going on in the fight, and that helps a great way. So that probably helps to offset. The communication question, because I think communication is probably the biggest challenge with pugs, is there may be a different style of communication with the group or a different dynamic with the group, and that can get offset if you have people not normally grouped there, or am I totally off? No, no, you're absolutely correct. You know, the, some of the problems can arise when people can't get into the, uh, the voice program that you're using. You know, so right, if, yeah. if people can't use Discord, then we would have to type instructions to them. So the people that have done it at T3 don't need us to type instructions to them. They just need to know where we're going. Uh, right. And then they can do it. And then we've had a couple people uh, during the raids, you know, basically have commented on, oh, the target assist is not in the right place. The, or you guys should really kill these guys first, you know. Uh, and these uh, tips really helped us you know, it's it's at that point it's all about the little improvements. You know, you make it you can find adjustments to what you're doing. But I can really speak to what you were saying too about them talking about or about talking about knowing what you're doing. And so that's that's when it really becomes easy for everybody. Because if everybody knows what they're doing, then the, the, like you said, the direction's minimal. If people get eyes, you know, they're gonna drop puddles, they'll get out of the way because they're paying attention. Um, and that just makes everything work awesome. At that point. Oh, uh, oh, oh, I'm just thinking, oh, that could be the problem with Remark is because I tend to get very frustrated when there are a lot of puddles in the area. Yeah, and that's and that's Remarkand exactly what it's designed City, for. It would be a problem for me. <laughs> yeah, and that's what it's designed for. When you're first, you know, you've got the puddles, you've got uh, the knockbacks. You've got the, the you know the spiders that kill you if you're close to them. So you've got all these oh, all yeah. these challenges, uh, and and then it just gets to be chaos because if yeah. you have a couple of people die, and then you have to 
make sure you jump over the spider or you have to kill that spider, you know. Uh, so that's, I agree with you. It can, it can act, absolutely become chaos. In, in All that, right. Uh, yeah. So, so if that's the style of raid that Remarchant is, then it might not work. All right. Then you get to go talk about tactics, expected class roles. See what kind of role will your class have. Just make sure you're prepared for that. Like, if you play a minstrel, just remember if you if you join a pug as a minstrel, there's half a chance there's, there's a good chance that the raid be, or is looking for a healer. So if you are red line only, that can be a problem. And then of course, he does talk about voice chat, the problems that you could potentially have with voice chat. And talks about consumables. Yes. And talk about basic consumables, scrolls. Don't so, say tokens. Yeah, scrolls. Better not say course, tokens. <laughs> and, and of course, potions are also in there. And of course, the other consumables that you have, things like the the store ones, the scroll of morale and power thing, the five five percent attack damage and tome of defense, those things yep. that I usually use raids because I have them piling up on my character sometimes with Hobbit present. <laughs> and he also talks about these consumables. Like one thing he's showing is it it's the Laharn roll, and I'm wondering, okay, this is apparently something that's created by top gilded cooks, and you know how many expansions it's been since I've bothered increasing my cooking guild status? <laughs> I got to max in there, but there was absolutely nothing that cooks did. I think up and up to Helm's Deep, cooks were always left behind in everything when it came to to guilds. So I just stopped leveling my cook. No, I, I've leveled the cooking itself, but not the gilded recipes. There's talk about this roll here that gives plus two point five percent damage and outgoing healing physical mastery. What? I never heard of this before. Oh, that's a roll. That sounds more like a croissant. Yeah. These consumes are temporary, but they're a large enough difference that on any rate of pushing you over the level in there. And he says acquiring these acquiring these buffs treat cheaply. Well, for me, it means doing a lot of what I don't know how many tiers of cooking they've added, not just regular cooking, I mean, of course, gilded cooking they had it since I stopped doing that. So, I don't know about that. He also talks about plugins. Make sure that you're on time. And Absolutely, and yeah. <laughs> make sure you're on time, or if they know that you're going to be, that you're all set and and can get there before boss one, you might be able to yeah, get away with the trash, as you noted. Yeah, if you're and just course, grouping up with another person, then maybe it's not that big of a deal. But yeah. if you have 11 people waiting for you, then it's relatively rude to do that. So. <laughs> and that concludes uh, that little guide there. So that's Squirrel's Guide on Getting Ready for a Raid. And he also had a little note on Major Small Updates. He talks about things like updates that made a big difference, even though they weren't considered big major ones. Like one of them was essence crafting and reduction in slots. He talked about Evendim. The PVMP override, one little button that changed your graphic setting so for when you're in PVMP. So, yeah, so that if you to, so you could reduce your graphics in the moors so that you didn't have to worry about being lagged out because lag in the moors is probably 
worse for it to happen there. If it, if I, I agree. Nothing do. like having your screen freeze for 20 seconds and then you're dead. <laughs> yeah. Virtues being tied to specific deeds he talked about. Barter wallet. Talked about that one. Disenchanting gear and items. Solo instances and inspiration buff. That was one of the things we talked about. Featured instance and new group content. The wardrobe. The carry-all. The housing and updates. And they talked about his dis... So those are his favorites. And they talked about dishonorable mentions. Things that he didn't like. Uh, he didn't like any update that was he they felt was rushed. And he doesn't like how scaling works in Lotro because he says, oh yeah, scaling works nice and wonderful from 90 to 105. Anything else is just out of whack. <laughs> and I guess he was talking about the the epic battles on there because and specifically for that range because the epic battles once you get too far out of the 100 range for epic battles if you're too low then you get squished too high you're squishing them Apparently yeah it's yeah so it, it, it's it's too bad because it's just created this kind of natural gate to all this content uh and it would be really nice to see so many things scaled up you know, yeah, if, if like Dragok, be... you know, Dragok's one that people complain about all the time. It'd be wonderful if we could have it uh, scaled all the way up because it's just a, that's a fun raid to do. But what's the point of doing it uh, at this point? Uh, you know, other than for nostalgia, you know. <laughs> yeah, unless you happen. Let's see. The tree beard server. What level are they at, at sir, now? They might actually be at a level where Dragok is reasonable unless they haven't reached. And that's it for our site news. So let's go into our week in gaming. And Krister, what were you up to? Well, we had our most successful night uh, with T2 Hidden Horde. Uh, definitely felt like a, a really strong progression. Uh, we uh, smoothly got done with uh, boss one, um, even with uh, losing somebody off the platform, which was awesome. It went off without a hitch. And then uh, our aggro management on some of the more problematic trash balls uh, went really well. It was just, it just was smooth as butter last night. Everything went good. We got to boss two. Uh, we lost the first time, and it was extremely frustrating loss because basically when you phase him to the chandeliers once the chandelier drops it uh he's unbuffed at that point and so all of his mitigations go away and that's when you hit him as hard as you can and so first chandelier dropped we hit him as hard as we could uh drive him to the next chandelier it dropped we were hitting him as hard as he could we realized we had to move him again and in that third move he got to a point this point where he was uh one-shotting us and so he one shot, he got both the tanks, and then everybody just dropped dead at that point. And so we, he was at 5%, though. He was at 5% health. So everybody was like, oh, ah! But then in the next round, we just did it. We just got it done. It went really smooth. And so what we decided uh, for the time being is uh, if we get Boss 2 down on Friday nights, we're going to stop right there. And we have another appointment tomorrow uh, earlier in the day. Uh, to try the uh, final boss. And so uh, looking forward to doing that. And it was really just ha everything went great. It was just like uh, we were talking about earlier, finally, about everybody was doing their job. Everybody knew what they needed to do on each part of the bosses. And so everything went, went smooth. It was just smooth, uh, quiet, efficient, and... Uh, victorious. So it was just a good night. Um, and now I'm excited because I found a whole new cosmetic set in ESO. So now my explosion oh. horde 
is decorated in bones, and I'm very excited about that. So I'm going to run him around the lands uh, and see if he can find more things to stick on his uh, on his bone armor. And then I uh, drag. I there was a game I picked up a long time ago called High Fleet by Activision. And it's kind of a side scroller, interesting, weird, like uh, airship combat game. And so I've been playing a little bit of that, and I'm still uh, in the midst of my creative tsunami. So uh, working on a bunch of uh, art projects, which I'll probably annoy you guys with at some point in the future. So, Sans, what did you get up to? Well, I didn't do a whole lot this week in gaming, uh, at least not during the week, part of the week. I patched Lotro, and I finished the last few days of year two of Stardew Valley, and I received a Statue of Perfection, which is pretty cool. And I killed some more things with the Blue Mage job in Final Fantasy XIV, and learned a couple new skills last night, which was pretty fun. How are you liking the Blue Mage, by the way? Uh, it is, it's fun. Like, I need to get a good guide at some point, um, uh, because my philosophy so far has been run around and kill things and hope that I learn something. Because um, <laughs> it's a class that, uh, learns how to use the skills of the monsters it's battling sometimes. Um... Which is pretty fun. I've learned self-destruct from a bomb. I'm not sure how much use it actually is in combat. Well, but yeah, I was gonna say. Think to about be, if like, you... standing with your friends and all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> like you actually just die. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun until you do that in your house and wreck your bed. You know. Well, oh. yeah, I mean that would stink. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, and then I was trying to learn final sting. Uh, few months back and that did not go so well um because final sting is final so i need a new plan for learning that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> but, <laughs> you can only learn it once <laughs> right so but yeah i learned um a couple of stuns last night which was pretty cool so pine leaf how's your week and I will begin with my honor warden who reached level 140. Now I have four cap wardens, I guess. And I also created a new lore master, as I said earlier. Now, why well, decided that this was my one on Landreville, and since Landreville is where I tend to be doing my group content for higher level stuff, I took that Valor, that I had a 120 Valor, the vault, so I took that and took that out of storage, and now I hit up to 120, I'm currently 125, doing missions like, and learning how to use the Lore Master in there, because, though I have played the Lore Master a few times in there, I'm really starting to get an appreciation for some of the things that the Lore Master can do damaging. Now, I am blue line, but I've got enough toes in the red line in order to do a nice bit of damage with some of my lightning skills when I am at to it. It's nothing like when running a skirmish and the group is coming at you, a, a full counterattack is coming at you, and I just slam down a lightning storm and wipe out the Entire group in one shot. Whap! Then that Friday is pretty night... satisfying, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, pretty satisfying. <laughs> and for Friday Night Fights, we ran the Houses of Rest. And after that, we had three people left. So we ran Keys of Harland and, well, as a couple of skirmishes. And that's it for my week in Lotro. We currently have 16 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join the Celestrious Raid of Players and help support Lotro Players, you can go to the Nature's Page to support the Players Alliance on Patreon. We did not receive emails this week. If you'd like since when you can send it to podcast at lotroplayers.com. You can also follow us at Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players 
ally. Loach players at Loach players. Arendis at Arendis. Pineleaf at Polyfeagle. Sensewind at Sensewind. Terry Edwin at Terry Edwin. Guarendis at Guarendis. Calabathian at Calabathian. And Christer at SPN1. The Players Alliance has two shows. All on Saturdays. Usually at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have Loach Players News. And on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, if track is available, we have DDO Players News. You can join us for our shows at loachplayers.com slash live. And that's all for tonight, and this is Pilot Mules reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>